speak in front of Nam. If we let X represent the number of heads we get at all to the two times, we can get we can we can land on head no times, we can two times land on head zero. We can land one head, one tail, or two heads. It can be zero, one, or two. In other words, we can get tails for both calls. Heads for both calls. We can get heads for we can get tails for both pulses, heads for both pulses, or one tail, head, and one tail. Doesn't work together. So if you're policy coins, you know, you can kind of think of what might happen. Capital X represents or identifies a random variable. Lowercase x is the possible value of this variable. That's when we go back to the lowercase x and we start working on the problem. Honestly, if you put the wrong size so x, I'm not good. It's not going to change anything. My math lab doesn't want to do And it counts everything, so you're coming to fail. A discrete random variable, a discrete random variable, has either a finite or countable number of values. The values of a discrete random variable can be plotted on a number of lines of space between each point. I don't, but there's a way to look at them and tell what it, what it is without actually using definitions, but it only works. In here. If you're looking at whole numbers, you're discrete. If you're looking at numbers that have fractions in here, okay. that will always hold that it will be. A continuous random variable has infinitely in values. Just like discrete variables, continuous variables. But now we're adding the word random in it. The probability distribution of a discrete random variable and the probability model, I can't remember what your book says there. The probability distribution or model of a discrete random variable X provides the possible values of the random variable and their corresponding probability. It's like a relative frequency table. That's really the, what you're looking at. Is a relative frequency distribution or table. And we did those in chapter two. <coughs> Discrete probability distribution, there's two. One, the individual values, or the individual values for x, the between zero and one inclusive, we could say greater than or equal to zero. Or less than or equal to one. And that just means between zero and one inclusive. It can be zero, it can be one, it can be between. And I think there were some videos about we did that day of pulsing all over the place. And we looked at those probabilities. But that's the first one. The second one, the sum of the individual probabilities must equal one. And we say that every time we teach it, it has to be one. But at the same time, if you're having to convert from a fra from fraction to decimal, if you round, you may get 0.99 or 0.01 in the rounding. That's okay. So being a little off is okay. Not a lot, but a little. <laughs> That your individual values are between zero and one, the sum of them all equals. This is actually this is from the book. I didn't pick it just because I like that. 
but it's in the margins of the textbook. There's a table that does this, and there's like three example problems using this data from the test. So it's shooting three free throws. Suppose we ask the basketball player to shoot three free throws. We're going to let our random variable x represent the number of shots made. The basketball player can make zero free shots, one free shot, two free shots, and three free shots. And reality, in terms of really speaking about this, we're not just looking at three free shots. We're looking at what this player has done over time and breaking it into groups of three. They may have shot 300 free throws over the season. We're looking at three at the time, and we're making comparisons between each group of three. So here's the values taken from the textbook. So the values of x for this person, and each individual value of x. The probability that this player makes none of the three free throws is 0.01. It's pretty small. The probability of making none of the three shots is 1%. It, it can happen, but it's probably not going to. The probability that they make one of the three is 0.10 or 10%. Two of the three is 0.38 or 38%. Three of the three is 0.51 or 51%. Now, if I were betting on this person, then I don't know what I don't do because I know better. Stats you're not supposed to win. With probability, you're not supposed to win. Most games of chance, you're maybe going to win. Or you shouldn't win. So, the probability of this free throw player, if they walk up to the line and they're, you know, if I want to know if they're going to make three free throws in a row, because that's their highest probability, that's where I'm guessing. I'm going to say, yeah, they're probably going to make all three. And they might and they might not. But they have a higher probability of making all three than they do of missing even. Because the probability for these three together is 0.49. It's not a lot less, but you know, I've got a better shot of pulling in all three than missing any at all. Okay. So I'm going to say there, that's what I would get at. If I have a wider option of things to say, I'm going to say they're going to make two or three shots. If that's an option for me to say. And then I've got an 89% chance of being right on that. So that's what can happen. This particular player, I can't remember what their individual probability was. It was somewhere in the 80s, I think, of just walking up and shooting one free throw remaining. Okay? Since each individual probability of X is between 0 and 1, and they all were, and our column of the probabilities adds up to 1, we have a probability distribution, which is what we're looking for. Our table tells us the probability of a player making all three free throws is 0.51. It also gives the probabilities for making 0, 1, and 2 with the three shots. Comes back later because it comes back in another problem that asks more about it on down the line. When you're identifying discrete probability distribution, I have some exercises on here. For each exercise below, we're going to determine the number. Determine if the table if the table gives a discrete probability distribution and then tells why or why not. And you, there's not a whole lot of telling the why or why not, but these are going to be in these are in the modern mouse you can see. This one, if I can move the little screen. This could be, I'm not sure what it is. The probabilities are all equally likely because they're the same. We have the range, the discrete random variables are 0, 1, 2, or discrete random variable values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The probability of each individual value is 0.2. Okay, so what I do is I look at the probability column. If all of these are positive, we're okay there. Then I'll look to see if they're greater than one. These are all between zero and one, so rule one checks. If I add those probabilities up, I get exactly one, so rule two checks. 